Alright everybody, another Team Story Cup game. Lucifron versus Hope. Zerg player in the top left. Terran in the bottom right. Now this map is Star Station. I think I've actually vetoed this map on my own game. Nice bundling here from Lucifron on the near mineral patches. It doesn't look like uh, Hope is as inclined to do that. I generally don't do it is either because it sometimes just screws yourself up. But you can see a real good discipline in getting those short mineral patches taken. I don't know if that's... If we look at the income... Maybe the slightest bit of a lead there for Lucifron. I know that it is worthwhile. Uh, it's just not something I'm, I'm ghost to enough to really worry about. Anyways, as saying, Star Station is a map that I think I vetoed in most of my maps for ladder. Just because it's a four player map and I actually really suck at the late game. So I generally try to find maps that I can put on pressure a little bit better than that. Very much a macro oriented type of map. I'm interested in see what kind of style Lucifer gets out of this. I know that he's played a lot of Hellbad drop style uh, with mech follow up. We'll see if that's the pl the plan he goes for again with this. Hope I'm not as familiar with. I have seen him do really well recently, uh, but not against a Terran player. So I'm not too sure what his style or preference will be. A lot of the times right now we're seeing the swarm host going out against mech. It's crossed only, which is interesting that I keep seeing these players ask about this. Whereas I know I've casted a loose front game where he's asked the same thing. And the referees have said that it is cross only. And that's just probably the way they wanted to set up the tournament for better maps uh, and better games is to be able to have a cross only. We do see a gas. I don't know if that came up before barracks, slightly just before. Reaper coming out to scout. Why not? Maybe we'll see a second one to put on a bit of pressure. This map's pretty long, so we're likely going to be seeing, excuse me, the queens out. Uh, before that makes too much damage. Mm. Gibson's finest. Breakfast of champions. Yeah, we're going to see a command center on the low ground. Also, something I've seen a lot out of Lucifron on a game like this with cross maps, and I'm sure it's very important to know that it is cross map so that you have the confidence to throw this down. What did he just build? Oh, he built another Reaper. Which is a little surprising. I personally would probably be more inclined to get out my command center sooner. But it looks as though... Is he going to grab that droney drone? It's very interesting to see Hope take the watchtower early on. Maybe it's just for this specific reason. But it's almost an assumption you can just make at this point if you're a Zerg player. That the Terran will go for that quick reaper. Being a little bit of a jerk... A couple of Zerglings are out, just pecking away. I mean, you know as a Zerg player that these are essentially a sacrifice. Woo! Close call there. That these Zerglings can just be a sacrifice. He's already got six out. Uh, and another four on the way. With speed. He, but he would need to, as a Zerg player, have that map control. Looks like Lucifron's going to try to... Uh-oh. Nice pull away. It's fine. It's just a metagame right now. If you're going up against a couple of Reapers and you don't want to get totally just beaten up on your drone line, you got to get out those Zerglings. And having something like four just isn't enough. And I feel for Zerg players as a fellow Zerg player and a Terran player that there's not much you can really do about it at this stage. Behind this, Command Center's already finished. Bunker at the front, moving into Hellions. Super, super standard. And even the fast third Command Center. Which I'm really excited to see. Top Terran players I see that are Korean will get that fast third command center almost for sure. And getting out that couple of Reapers, I mean the, the Zerg player isn't even considered taking a third hatchery yet. Because it's, oh, here he comes actually. Which is good on, did he kill anything? I don't know if he got one of those Reapers or not. Which is good on Hope for doing that. Now that he has his speed links out, he can have that control, and if he doesn't do that, the Terran player is going to macro ahead really, really fast. Hmm. Still really no gas taken for Hope. 
He only got the first gas enough to really get the speed. Now he's finally taking it again. You can see he only had 100 gas mined from that. Not take... Oh, one other gas at this point. This thing is probably just to be able to get his lair up and out. While at the front. And... Zerg player taking the nearby watchtowers. Which is just a smart thing to do. Trying to see where did those Hellions go? How did I lose those Hellions? Unit stab. I know the cheat for that. There they are. Six Hellions, enough to control the map against most Lings that are out there. Doesn't have blue flame or anything yet. He's getting stim packs, so it looks like we're not going to see mech play and double engineering bait before this even any other barracks. Such a ballsy macro play. Going for all the upgrades before even the production facilities. Looks like he's just going to get down another couple of barracks now. Super crazy. Love that style. Queen's deflecting at the front. Hope wants to have good creep spread, particularly between his bases and where he's going to go for his fourth bases. Did you see what Lucifer is really doing there? He's trying to pick off the creep tumors. Did a good job. Queens really aren't taking any damage. Hellions are getting a little bit beaten up, so he's going to have to pull back. Good pile of lings out now. I don't know if Hope's going to really want to try to attack these guys off of creep. Good overlords in position around here as well. I don't think there's any starport, otherwise getting out one viking would probably be a, a decent move. Watchtower to see if any lings are going to be putting any pressure on. Hmm. It looks like both of these players are content to play a no-touch, 15-minute kind of game. Spine crawler, just for precautionary sake. Still macking up units. If we look at the worker supply, what I've loved about the style that Lucifron takes is it's still super, super worker-focused and getting out all the units you need to uh, to be able to build up that giant late-game macro army. Ooh. I do like the sprinkling of widow mines in there. As you see the spread right now from hope to be able to deal with that. And down go those links. I don't know if they've got any actual worker kills. Let's take a look. Maybe one out of all that one might have been a scout at some point. Creep spread's going well. No fourth base. Lair is finished. Macro hatch. Which is good, I think, at this standpoint, just because of the amount of bank that we see out of hope right now. Running a thousand minerals. Upgrades are working just fine. The Terran player should be starting his 2-2 really soon. He worked to get all those engineering bays really fast. There he goes. And is he getting mech as well? No, he hasn't invested in his mech yet. Looks like more links have run in. Good control of Lucifer on there. He actually only lost two Marines out of that whole thing. See a scan going down. Probably to just check what the tech is at. Yeah, he does scan the main. But the tech isn't being built in the main. Where's the spire being built? Yeah, it's being built in the natural. So I don't believe... Our forces are under attack. No, we Lucifer on does not know about the spire yet. But when you see a lot of lings out on the map... These little lane chip aways are pretty good. He's gotten a handful of more worker kills out of that. He's still down a fair bit in supply. A little surprised there hasn't been a couple of Widow Mines moved maybe to the top side of the base with all those run buys. Lucifron, what I've noticed, super, super tight player, really, really smart. But for some reason, you can always seem to run by a few units and do damage. I like healing up the worker line there. It's really smart. Big pile of links. 2-2 two -two is on the way. About the same time as 2-2 two -two for the Terran, so not much of a lead there. Bane links being produced right now. I don't believe that there's Bane link speed yet. We'll see in a moment. Another pile of links. See what like I said? Another mine or two at the top. Oh boy. You see the pullback from Lucifer on there? was to try to make sure that the mines don't hit his units. But look at this damage to this worker line. I, I don't know what Lucifron's spending all his time doing right now. Well, I guess he lost a small group of 
units up there, but... 19 workers killed. That's just really, really crappy out of Lucifer on there. As I said, he's got a dis disappointing tendency to just let things kill him. There were some drops heading out from Lucifer. And look at all these mines at the front. One or two up here. And he would do a lot better of a job. Big pile of lings out. Mutalisks on the way. Tutu is about to finish for his ground army. Just checking around to the different bases. See if there's another expansion going up. Lings do get spotted at the top. Those ones get cleaned up pretty easily. Another little bit of a lull in the action right now. Extra burrow for the drilling claws. That drop is going to try to run away, but he better he's better off dropping on this low ground here, I think. Oh, the mutas actually pull back. That's surprising. Should be able to hunt that down. More Ling runbys. Completely unchecked. Looks like they got one or two worker kills out of that. Just, I don't know, Lucifer plays such a smart defensive game. He's even got a bunker here. It'd be totally worth his time to get a bunker up here just to defend that mineral line. Great army coming up just as 2-2 is finished. Does have the Widow Mines in position. You see the nice spreads from Hope to try to be able to deflect away some of the Widow Mines. Oh boy. One, oh man, great hits on the Widow Mines there. Those Mutas are in drop shape. Looks like he's going to go for a surround run by. Nice splitting out of the army there to delay things. Wow, big hit there. It was a nice push by Lucifron, but unfortunately most of that gets cleaned up pretty handily. Follow up out of Lucifron though does save the medevacs, which is important. He will get those Widow Mines before they manage to do anything. I'm assuming he should probably pull back at this army. There really isn't enough here to deal with uh, this, this force out of hope. It's a pretty big pile of, of units. Three threes, a little bit more than halfway done. Back at home, this pressure has given Lucifron a little bit of an opening. They're getting himself down another base. Ooh, Mutalisks pull back just in time. Another run by of Mutalisks here. The Mutalisk Zerglings. I don't know if that's enough Marines to handle that. I don't, it doesn't look like it. Medivac is helping out a lot. More units come in to deal. No Bane, oh there's the Banelings. I'm like, there's no Banelings in this army. What the hell? Terran player has to pull back. Even though it's off creep. Those Zerglings are just going to be too effective. Big mine hits, but that hit a lot of, of the Terran army as well. Good splits, but I don't think that uh, I don't think it was good enough. Big amount of supply out of hope right now. Decent Widow Mine hits. This base is in a lot of trouble. Lots of Mutalisks out to do damage. That fourth might get cancelled as well. It looks like Lucifron's able to stabilize for a moment. Yeah, Hope's gonna have to pull back. He doesn't have the units to be able to push again. His fourth base. If we look at the units tab. Good worker lead out of Hope there. He did manage to get a lot of hits away on the economy of Lucifron. It's a pretty messy game. I don't know if he's, he hasn't got anybody back on building these buildings again. Lucifron. Oh, looks like there's a drop on this side. That gets shut down pretty easily. Fifth base. This should be able to get up uncontested from the Zerg player. Yes. See, I, the uh, Widow Mine bio style was super, super effective against the uh, Zergs for the longest time. Interesting little run by here. Nice pull by Lucifron. Super slick. Really smart. We see the Marauders coming out now. Obviously not to deal the damage. They're there to tank the damage against the Banelings. Let's see if this pushes in. 
He lifted up the widow mine. Oh, that's so shitty. You got a bunker there to use too, chief. The problem with the widow mine play against the top zergs right now is they're learning how to separate and send in little bits of units. And you'll see that if you're if you're unlucky, widow mines will do more damage to yourself than it will do to another player. It's interesting how these barracks have actually created a bit of a wall to help the Terran players zone out the Zerg. I like that a lot. Oh, excuse me. Fifth base just finishing up. The Zerg army is going to have 3-3 here fairly soon. The Terran players are already on 3-3, so it's worthwhile for the Zerg player just to back off for a little bit and wait for his upgrades to finish. Fourth base moving over. There's no other command centers in production, and if you've watched Loose Frog games like me, he loves getting out tons of command centers, but he's just been behind too far in this game to be able to kind of get those out. Nice counter from Hope. Just doing whatever damage he can. He's not even really invested in getting upgrades. Plus one for his Mulisks, that's it. He's got a good sized bank. Nothing in the main base for Lucifron to deal with this. It's always the big risk. Too many Marauders in that drop didn't really get the damage done. See, these Mutalisks, they're just going to escape and they're going to be able to regenerate. Zerg player's coming in with a big push. This 3 3 is just about to finish, though. Now it finishes. So that was going to help him out a lot. That's a lot of Widow Mines. Um, it's hard to say. Lucifron's losing a lot of supply. Hope's got himself a good enough bank to remax. To re this command center is really close to dying. Don't run it away from your army, Lucifron. Looks like he will keep it alive. Lucifron stabilizes again. Not pretty, but he's managing it. This should be a planetary at some point. Planetary. The Zerg player, I don't think, knows him. Yes, he does. He's going to have to push down and take that out. There he goes. We do have the Ultralisks out. Kindness plating isn't finished yet, but that shouldn't matter too much. Units are getting a little bit picked off here. Not great control about uh, keeping those alive. They must not matter as much to him. He's lost, I think, every single Mutalisk. And actually lost all of his Ultralisks as well. Ultralisks so tanky. It's just like Hansel. So hot right now. Good control by Lucifron, moving around the buildings, trying to pull back some of the units. you got to keep moving now with the all-around splash damage from the Ultralisks. They do beat the hell out of you if you're not paying, care, paying attention. Killing off a production facility, but that's not a big deal. That's 150 bucks to make it back. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Having the Marauders out is obviously really good against the Mutalisks. Planetary is finished. More structures on the way. Does need to think about another command center, or at least maybe moving that one over to another base. Zerg player is pretty content right now. He hasn't gone after another base. Mind out, mind out. Pretty much mind out. So I would expect him to try to move in and take another one or two. Mm. Yes. Drinks. Zerglings running around the other side again. Doesn't look like there's anything over here to stop them. I like this constant aggression from Hope. It's not finishing the game, but it sure is just giving him that little bit of an edge that he needs. Even controlling these Zerglings at the very end. I'm surprised he does not burrow yet. Where is this? Yeah, I'm quite surprised he does not burrow yet. I think that'd be a really smart move for him. Ooh, yeah, he is repairing that because if you manage to get, let's say, a handful of links into the main base and burrow them, 
You gotta waste the scan to get rid of those. And right now, Lucifron can't really afford very much. Lucifron is building up a supply. Upgrades are the same. And even look at the bank. Lucifron's got a huge gas bank, so... I think Hope's still in the lead, but not as much as he was. Lots of Banelings. Lots of Ultralisks. Looks like he's gonna go crash this planetary. Might do a Baneling sacrifice on it just to take it out. The thing about having a ton of bio is it doesn't do damage fast enough. Oh. Oh no, Banelings. Oh no, Banelings. That was so good. Ooh, Infestor's out as well. Sick. Those, uh... Oh, man. These Ultralisks are gonna be able to get right on top of this army with all those fungal growths. Lots of Widow Mines. No vision in this army, but the fungal growths reveal all the mines. Yeah, Lucifron. That's pretty much it. GG's out. Man, I'm really, really impressed with Hope. This guy's been playing some great, smart games. But as I'd said, Lucifron, giving away economy too easy, not having the defenses to the north, and he was never able to really go out and put pressure on the Zerg player after about the 10 minute mark. Just great, constant pressure from Hope. And yeah, I think that he quite handily had won that game by the end of it. And that's saying a lot, Lucifron's a pretty big talent. Hope you guys like that. More action coming at you real soon.